giving sustenance to a lot of a lot of insect life and of course for most humans I guess it's the butterflies that are the insects that we love and find so beautiful. Red Admiral. All this nectar giving these guys a drink. There'd have been moths on here during the night. We had a hummingbird hawk moth on here. And the things I find fascinating. Oh, darn it, are the hoverflies. Got a peacock butterfly disappearing. One over there. Another one over there. Beautiful. Have a little look further around. I think I'm big and scary because as I'm approaching, everything's flying away. Got a white butterfly down there. Loads of peacocks. Peacocks must really be emerging at the moment. Look at those. Common, common thing. Doesn't make them any less beautiful. I've got a couple of peacocks up there. A lovely red admiral. It's flashing those warning colours. Well, those fake eyes as they feed on them. Startle predators, maybe. I did have, as I was saying, a lovely hornet hoverfly. Huge hoverfly a couple of days ago. There's another hoverfly down here. Common species now, quite a large one. Oh, there it goes. So the Buddleias, non-native, terribly invasive weed, certainly on railway lines and things. But I have to say, for all of that, if you want to put these in your wildlife garden, unless you're a purist, these plants are absolute attractants to a multitude of nectar feeding insects. You're helping them, and of course, you get to see these amazing animals. Welcome to this week's vlog. Another weekend, another weekend, another week come and gone. Enjoy the vlog. I hope you've had a really good week. If you haven't and the heat's got a bit much, hopefully quiet down. Not too hot next week, probably just right. So enjoy next week, make the best of it, and be as happy as you can. It is the secret of life, being happy, nothing more. Enjoy the video. Now this week has, all, has been really all about the hot weather. Some of you might remember these European glass lizards, European legless lizards. They were, came, came to us via a reptile rescue. Really badly beaten up. The rescuer treated them for internal external parasites. We hydrated them and got them feeding. Now a few weeks later, they've had a really huge varied diet. They eat like pigs. They're fattened up. And they've just started to shed their skin. So you might remember they were covered in terrible sores and wounds. They were healing, they weren't really full of bacteria. And now they're healing themselves, good quality diet, all kinds of things. Mealworms today, but they eat chick legs doused in um, vitamin and mineral powder. Salmon, boiled eggs with the shells crunched in. Locusts, crickets, obviously bigger mealworms, morio worms. These guys are not fussy what they eat and have had plenty of food, including a good quality dry cat food, actually. So you can see on this one, the damage looks bad, but it's actually coming away now. And these were really, really battered, battered creatures. And this one over here, you can see those pale areas, that scarring where he's sloughed his old skin off, as they're all starting to do. And the pale areas and nice fresh skin, healed skin. So I'm hoping by this winter, these guys will be fully healed. And if they are, they'll go into hibernation as is normal for these animals, where they come from. Hopefully in the meantime, we'll have a lovely outdoor enclosure built for next summer. And we'll see if we can breed these behind a sort of a glazed enclosure where they'll heat up nicely outdoors. But really, it's all been about the heat. Today I've come home from school and it's 40 degrees. 40 degrees in the shade in the UK. I don't have a lovely clear sea to swim in. I don't have a swimming pool at home. And we don't have air con. I'd say pretty normal if you live in the UK. We are not set up for 40 degree heat. That's 40 degrees in the shade. 
up to 30 mile an hour winds today and they are baking and they are a recipe for forest fires and grass fires and up at the Falkery Centre the next village over has had a huge crop fire on the barley fields which are tinder dry and only stopped from breaching the Holdenby estate due to the field adjacent on Holdenby was set with beans which obviously are greener and leafier than dried barley so that could have swept right up to the Falkery Centre certainly towards us it's just not normal for the UK but of course it's going to be more normal every year so these guys here as much as they love the heat these guys here have got a fluorescent light on their heat lamp is switched off the whole reptile room apart from a couple of lights is switched off it's set at 28 degrees normally ambient and the reptile room has stayed at 27 and a half to 29 degrees it's the coolest room in my house now that is ludicrous ludicrous it's cooler in here than anywhere else in the house but what it does mean thankfully is these guys here and all my reptiles are safe from dying of overheating because this insulated room has held itself with everything switched off despite the heat outside at 40 plus staying at a correct ambient temperature thank goodness for that so the european legless lizards looking really really well well certainly you can see there as it's sloughing its skin the new skin and the dead tissue from its old wounds fantastic creatures it'll be great to see these outside next year enjoy the rest of the video Up at the Falkery center nine classes of kids today look at old norma fully blind hedgehog so she comes out day and night she doesn't know when it's day or night she's hurt me now she finds a way around by feel and touch smell and also in her enclosure memory so if we scare her she's likely to run straight back into a little house without any trouble at all. What a little sweetie. Norma. Norma. Hmm. Hello. Norma. Come and see her for yourself. Holdenby.com. Scroll through to the openings. You can see the gardens, the falconry, the birds flying, the animals. Hands on animal talks. We're here every weekend in the summer, and so is little Norma. Look at her. What a sweetie she is. Okay, so the smooth snakes have had a couple of days out of their enclosure in this tub in a very cool barn because the temperature getting at around 40 degrees plus throughout their enclosure not happy at all or I wasn't happy to risk it so I'm going to repatriate them now they really are a wonderful UK species look at that Britain's rarest terrestrial reptile smooth snake captive bred from European stock how wonderful that people can come here and see such a iconic wonderful British reptile something that most people even reptile enthusiasts have never seen before they really are that rare and localized very much a specialist lizard feeder in the wild in captivity they can be sort of trained or worked in a way that they will take more easily available prey such as frozen mice that are thawed out and this girl here who's looking absolutely splendid she really is looking good and she's eating like a pig we're hoping that's because she's gravid and we could get baby smooth snakes 
later this summer. How wonderful is that? The male's looking like he's getting ready, I guess he is, to shed his skin, so he's rather dark and drab looking in comparison. Wonderful, wonderful snakes. I know a bit of carrot now. Do a bit of cold carrot look at yeah, what's this? Oh that nice, yeah. That's nice and cold, that'll cool you off. Yeah. Here's an interesting one, corn snakes, often the first snakes that people breed and yet for me it's the first time this year that we've ever paired our corn snakes up. They come out pretty good, very much the colours of their um, dad on the left and their mum in the middle there. Corn snakes, easiest ones to breed but look at all the eggs that didn't make it. Certainly cut their way out of there well. But most of the eggs infertile. She did lay a second clutch. Most of those were infertile too. So the easiest snakes in the world to breed. Not for me. <laughs> Pretty though. It's still so hot. It's actually really cool today. It's about 26 degrees centigrade rather than 40 yesterday. Nearly all the electrics are turned off in the reptile room and it's still holding a perfect 28 and a half degrees. No heating on at all. Absolutely amazing, really is. So we're feeding the snakes right now. Not all of them, but we're gonna feed a few of them. Then I'm gonna feed some of the baby false water cobras and then try and see if we can offer those black headed pythons some food and get them feeding for the first time. That's probably going to be something that's a bit technical. I won't be holding the phone to do that, but we're going to try and feed some of the snakes. Even though it's not as hot today, I've had nine classes back to back of children. <laughs> fun day, just a sort of fun meeting some reptiles really for half an hour slots. Nine back to back, back. Goodness me, my brain is fried. I can see snakes that can smell the food in here. I better go on and feed them. So they're having a mixture today, but mostly day old cockerels. Let's have a look at this <laughs> black tailed creeper. Hang on. As quick as that. Creepers and indigos. Pretty, pretty ferociously fast feeders. snake next. Wow. You see how he's using those jaws up and lower mandibles to almost walk that food item. In this case a down cockerel. Down his throat. Look at him go. The male bull snake, we've got some lovely babies from him this year. Look at that, straight down. Well, I've got to hurry up because he'll want a few more of those. How quick did he swallow that? Absolutely amazing, isn't it? Look at that. Like some kind of egg eating snake. Oh, he's coming for more now. Oh, oh. better get him another one quick. Whoa. One day post heat wave. It's a freezing 26 degrees today. Look at these. Budlier. Many people say invasive weed, as we've discussed many times. This orange one's just come out and it's covered in bumblebees. 
nectar producing plants, get them in your garden. You're helping wildlife, but you're also, of course, looking at the blur, you're also, of course, bringing that wildlife closer to you in all its glory and beauty, even a humble bee, a humble bumble. A glorious little insect, that actually is. It's quite an unusual snake. This was a snake that was in the news maybe a month ago. They kind of, you know what the news, it all kind of picks up on a story. This is Britain's fourth species of snake that breeds here. It's an Asculapian snake. They're a European species. And this one here, if I can get hold of him, this one here's a melanistic variety, so it's mostly black, heavily, heavily marked in black. Doesn't have the really noticeable yellow head markings that these young Asculapian snakes have. A little bit like a grass snake. I've ridden around a while, I've not picked this guy up for ages. Very, very slow growing indeed. Hello. Very slow growing indeed. These are now two years old. This is a snake that can get to probably a couple of metres long. <laughs> what? What? What you got? Hey? What you got? Hey? Oh. <laughs> Cool you off. There you go.